In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a patterned lizard with crayons and watercolors. I'm going to start with a printout of a lizard that I like that is big enough to fill up the majority of my page. I'm going to look at this lizard as I very lightly sketch it out on my plain white paper. I'm going to draw one section of the lizard at a time as I look to my right to see what shapes and what sizes I need to add next. I'm gonna start with the head and work my way down the body until I finish with the tail. I really want my lizard to take up the majority of my page. This lizard is going to be the emphasis of this art project, meaning it is going to be the focal point where the viewer's eyes go to when they look at the painting. They should go right to the lizard because the lizard is right in the middle. It takes up the most space and it's going to have details that make it visually appealing. Once I get my lizard sketched out very, very lightly, now I'm going to take a crayon. You can pick whatever color you like, Preferably, I'd use a darker color to make sure it really covers up all the pencil lines. So I'm gonna trace right on top of those pencil lines. And I wanna make sure that I'm being careful so that those pencil lines do not show up. I wanna cover them up completely. So I'm gonna add a couple eyes and now I'm gonna go into creating some patterns. So I'm gonna use any color crayons that I want, and I'm gonna make some interesting designs on my lizard. I'm gaining some inspiration from the lizard printout that I'm looking at, but I'm not copying those designs. I'm just using them to get some ideas. Now you can create whatever patterns you like. You might wanna make a pattern made up of curved lines or patterns made up of zigzag lines, patterns made up of circles and polka dots, patterns made up of little swirls. You might make patterns that are made up of concentric circles, so circles inside of circles inside of circles. You might draw stripes. You might draw squiggly lines. You might draw curved lines that are going in different directions. You can make your patterns look however you want, but I want you to use a variety of colors of crayons. So use as many colors as you want, but just know if you use a lot of different colors of crayons, you're also gonna be using a lot of different colors of paints. And I'm gonna explain that in just a minute. So when you go to paint with your watercolors on top of the crayon, remember crayon is a waxy material so it will push away the watercolor paint, creating a wax resist. So you'll be able to see the crayon through the watercolor paint. But just to be safe, I like to try to still kind of keep my paintbrush inside the lines when I'm painting so that I don't accidentally cover up some crayon because if the paint is a little bit too thick, it will cover up the crayon. Now I'm gonna use contrasting colors. Colors that are far apart from each other on the color wheel. So if my crayon is orange, I'm gonna pick either the complementary color, which is blue, or a color that's next to blue on the color wheel. So purple or green would also work well. If I am painting where the purple is, I'm gonna pick a contrasting color. So the complement of purple is yellow, but what I'm using right now is yellow orange to paint on top of the purple, which will make those purple lines stand out. So where this red violet crayon is, I'm painting with lime green on top of it. 
and where the lime green crayon is, I'm painting with a red violet. So those two colors are working together to make each other stand out. Red and green are complementary colors, so red violet is very similar to red. So again, you really want to use those colors that are far apart on the color wheel. So where the blue crayon is, I might use a red or an orange. Where this red crayon is, as you can see, I'm using blue watercolor paint. You don't want to use orange crayons and then red paint on top of it because those two colors would not contrast enough. So be thoughtful about the colors that you choose when you are painting on top of the crayon. You wanna make sure that the color choices of paint make the crayon pop or really, really stand out. You want those colors to work together to make your designs look very interesting. As you can see, I'm using a really teeny tiny paintbrush for my teeny tiny areas. So use the paintbrush that makes sense for the area that you're painting. If you're painting in little itty bitty details, then use a little itty bitty paintbrush. If you're painting in a large background, which I'm about to do next, I'm going to use a larger paintbrush. Make sure that you're keeping your paint colors inside the lines and make sure that you are using excellent craftsmanship. So filling up the white spaces, staying inside the lines, working carefully and neatly. Now for the background, as you can see, I'm always working right next to the lizard first. So I'm kind of outlining all the different parts of the lizard before I paint the white space around the lizard. This makes it so that I can paint those white spaces much faster. If I paint right next to the lizard and outline it in green first, then all those other areas in the background can go really, really fast because I won't have to worry about painting with my green paint inside my lizard. Now notice green paint is a color that I did not use inside the lizard. So you want to pick a color that contrasts the rest of the lizard. So since I didn't use much green in the lizard, I'm going to use a lot of green in the background. Now I don't want to just keep the background plain old green. I want to make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to take some colors that are analogous with green or colors that are right next to green on the color wheel and I'm just going to make some drops on the background. Now when you take different colors and you drop them on top of already wet paint, the colors will mix together beautifully and it'll create a really nice lovely texture. So I'm using blue and yellow to make dots around the paper. And then finally, I'm just simply going to take some plain old water on my paintbrush and I'm going to put drops of water all over the paper. And again, this is going to make that paint move around the paper really nicely to create some interesting texture. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have tons of fun creating your own patterned lizard.